And welcome to XR Creators. I'm John White, and I'm here with John Schell. And Mia is not able to make it today, I don't think. Um, and we're also here with our amazing speaker, Nayla, who I'll introduce in a moment. XR Creators hold regularly scheduled events for anyone interested in VR and AR creation. We've hosted artists, developers, entrepreneurs, enthusiasts, people who own companies, people who work for companies, people who want to own a company, people who just like VR and AR. So check out our alt space or YouTube channels to see who's coming to talk with us. And we love uh, welcoming people to the stage. So let us know if you want to join us sometime. Um, we welcome people of all backgrounds and with any amount of experience. The only requirement is passion for learning about and creating XR experiences. So before I introduce Nayla, here's how we generally run these events. We mute the audience during the presentation. And at, at the end, we open up for questions from the audience. And when those are exhausted or largely exhausted, we basically open everything up and people can mingle and talk and whatever. Um, it's always fun to hang out for a bit afterward if you have time. Uh, that's actually how we met Nayla earlier this year after Savvy's talk. So um, definitely, if you have the opportunity, hang out with us. So um, this is Nayla Al Khalifa. She's a virtual reality artist from the island of Bahrain. She graduated from the American University of Paris with a Bachelor of Arts in Art History. She has worked with the Louvre Museum in Paris, focusing on research programs around ancient artifacts. A few years ago, Nayla started work to combine her passions of art and technology. She uses the medium of virtual reality to create immersive experiences that focus on ancient art, architecture, abstract art, art history, and the human condition. She has hosted virtual reality talks in Bahrain, discussing her experiences as a VR artist, and worked with the Bahrain Embassy in Washington, D.C. on 3D printed projects and VR art installations. Additionally, she has displayed her work at the 45th and 46th edition of the Bahrain Annual Fine Arts Exhibition. She is in graduate school to continue her research in merging art and tech and wants to become a lecturer, author, and professor. So join me in welcoming Nayla to the stage, and thanks for coming out today. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for a wonderful introduction, John. That was wonderful. And I just want to begin by saying thank you so much for being here. And give me give me some, some clap emojis if you can hear me. All right, excellent. That's perfect. So I, I want to begin by thanking John and John and Mia for, for having me uh, speak at this at this wonderful the, at the wonderful new upgraded alt space VR. And and thank you all so much for taking taking the time to come and see me and, and hear me speak. Um, I am a virtual reality artist uh, currently, uh, but this is just the beginning. And uh, and I am from the little island of Bahrain, which is about it's about an hour plane ride from Dubai. And um, one of the most important things I like to focus on is ancient art. Uh, but before I get into that, I wanted to begin this presentation by speaking about my main inspirations. And they are mainly my paternal and maternal grandmothers. And I'll, I'll, get to, I'll get to my maternal grandmother in a little bit. So if you go to the next slide, please, I'd like to talk about um, the person who has inspired me um, in, in, in the, the things that I'm passionate about. Uh, over here on the right-hand side is my paternal grandmother. And she is one of the first archae female archaeologists in, uh, in the Arab countries. Uh, she uh, opened her home in the little island of Bahrain to uh, to several people from around the world. So initially, her house was the first museum, and uh, she collected uh, ancient artifacts from these sites to because uh, she didn't want them going to foreign uh, excavators. Uh, so so she, what she did was she preserved them in her home until the museum was built in the 80s. And over here on the left-hand side is her um, in during an excavation, and she always encouraged young women to join her because uh, archaeology is a predominantly 
uh, male uh, career at the time period. So she she always had had younger encouraged younger women to come with her on these excavations. So she is the main reason why I'm very interested in ancient art and in cultural preservation. And if you go on to the next slide, um, this is how I got into uh, this this passion. So on the, let me move out of the way so you can all see, on the uh, left hand side is actually one of the first sites that I visit as, visited as a child, which is Palmyra in Syria, which unfortunately a lot of this, this ancient, the the buildings of this ancient site do not exist anymore because of uh, warfare. And But I was fortunate enough to visit it and, and, and be inspired by this 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 beautiful um, the rem remnants of a civilization and on this is on the left hand side and on the right hand side is me at uh, doing my my research and the program at the Louvre Museum in Paris and uh, this is me standing next to the law code of Hammurabi have give me give me a round of applause if you know what the law code of Hammurabi is so it is one of the most important artifacts found in ancient Mesopotamia, and it is um, a law uh, a law code, one of the first written law codes in the world, and it is said to be the basis for the, the law of the laws in several countries today. And uh, if you go on to the next slide, please, John, I I wanted uh, I wanted to set aside. Uh, my inspiration of my paternal grandmother and I wanted to share a, sto a story about my maternal grandmother and why I got into drawing in virtual reality and we'll get to ancient art in a bit. So um, a, uh, an event occurred in the year of 2017 which was the year that I got into painting in tilt brush which was the passing of my maternal grandmother. And this, this has affected me so much, and I did not know how to deal with it. Um, but, but something that really helped me in overcoming this event was uh, preparing uh, my grandmother for a burial. And it was in this preparation that I actually found a lot of peace and let go of a lot of fear of, of, um, of her passing. So what I created here was the... the um, the transition of the soul in the material world, the structured, um, uh, m controlled material world that is always measured and always controlled into a world that is not structured by our mortal minds and the things that we understand currently of this world. It is a world that is open and that is free. And in this, during um, the creation of this piece, I actually, re I actually did so much re research on uh, testimonials by patients who had near-death experiences and they all said very similar things that relate to peace and and um, a feeling of eternal peace and which is what I wanted to create on the on the, the, the right hand side of the piece and we're, we're gonna get to this in a little bit this this theme in a little bit but we're gonna continue with ancient ancient artifacts and I will come back to this theme uh, later on in the presentation so if you go to the next slide please John so uh, I really liked this way of creating immersive art and being within the art piece that I decided to um, uh, use my research on the civilization of ancient Bahrain and recreate a virtual reality uh, art installation with it. So what you see here is the depiction of ancient Bahrain, which, is, which was called Dilman at the time. And over on the, the top uh, right is what, 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 what represents the Dilman ruins. And, and, um, and if you look within the ruins that I painted, there are seals. And these are actually seals that my grandmother has dug up during her excavations. And I wanted to recreate them um, to, to dedicate them to her. And these seals uh, represent animals and humans living together harmoniously. And what the viewer has to do in this piece is they have to go into the middle part of the piece into what's called the Dilman Sun. And as they go through the middle part of the piece, they are brought into this Dilman paradise, which is what the ancient Mesopotamians described this ancient land as, a Dilman paradise. And um, having said that, this piece is called The Land Where the Sun Rises, and the title 
is actually a piece of uh, text from a poem in that was written in the ancient text of cuneiform is on, on a clay tablet describing the ancient line of Dilmun. And I, over here on the left-hand side, I wanted to show the inspiration from the, the reliefs and the artifacts that are, that are currently in the museum. And I wanted to copy that ancient art style and discover it um, a little bit more. Uh, and if you go to the next slide, please, John. I wanted to delve further into uh, representing ancient art in, in, a, in, in a fun way and in a, in, in a way that we're familiar with. Which is, which is an artistic way, rather than just going to the museum and looking at pieces of artifacts. So what I did here was um, on, the, on the very um, right-hand side, I wanted to recreate um, a water temple that, that exists here in Bahrain. It is, it is not in a very good condition. However, it's, um, it's something to be celebrated because it is a water temple that is uh, dedicated to the water god Enki. And um, Enki and his wife as well. And Enki is uh, his symbol in, on the left hand side is, is written in cuneiform, and his wife's symbol is written in the Omega symbol, uh, dedicated to the Greeks that have also lived on the island. Um, and on, on, the very, on the very right are the bull horns from ancient Dilmun, and the, the, the animal, the bull is a very important part of ancient ceremonial um, ceremonial events. So that's why I wanted to represent it over here. In, in the middle part is, um, the middle piece is the, the bust of Gilgamesh, uh, who is a, a very, he's a very ancient, I mean, a very famous mythological figure from uh, the oldest tale in history, which is called the Epic of Gilgamesh. And this tale of Gilgamesh is actually, it's, it has several themes, but I wanted to focus on the main theme towards the end of the tale, which is Gilgamesh um, rising from the emotions that he's created on the bottom of the piece. And these emotions depict his fear of death. Um, and, and here he has ascended from this fear of death and from this frantic search for immortality. And he has finally gained acceptance and, and returned to his homeland and became a better king. And, and over on, on the far left side are two little sketches of some concept art that I've done. The top part are burial mounds and the bottom part is the, the, the lamasu. It, which is a winged beast. It's a half human, half animal beast that is found in, uh, you, they're found in, in gates in what is now modern day Iraq and Iran. And they, ha they are carved usually at the, fr uh, at the front of cities um, as protection. And, and the burial mounds are mounds that are found, uh, uh, there, there, used to be, there used to be so many of them all over Bahrain, but there's very few of them now. But these are mounds that have been uh, created for the, the, the people of Dilmun and the people from ancient Mesopotamia who come to B Dilmun to be, to be buried uh, because they believe that Dilmun was paradise. And the, the mounds are a representation of the woman's uh, womb uh, because the, the ancient people thought that when you, are, when you uh, go into your next life, you are, you, you are birthed into your next life just as you were birthed out of your, your mother's stomach. And all of these are essentially um, ideas for, for uh, perhaps for assets that I want to that I want to incorporate into uh, into games in the future using Unity. And if you go into the next slide, please, John. This is um, I'm really sad about this artwork because unfortunately this artwork doesn't exist anymore. It is deleted. I can't find the tilt brush file for it, which is really sad because I really I really like these ancient deities. These are representation of of uh, ancient deities that uh, that were um, worshipped by the people of Mesopotamia and of Dilmun, and I'll I'll go through them uh, one by one. So you have on the the top left is uh, Ishtar, and she is the goddess of love and war. Uh, she has she's always depicted with her horns, the crown, the, the crown uh, of horns, and and her star and wings as well. 
And then on the on the top right, you have Shamash, which is the god of the sun. And he he has a piece of of the of cuneiform that is actually from the law code of Hammurabi right over here. And he is giving the king on on the on the actual artifact. He's giving the king the rod and the ring, which are representations of power. And and he has the the symbol of the sun on his face. On the bottom, uh, on the bottom right, you on right underneath Shamash, you have Enki, which is the the god of um, of water. And he blesses the people with water. Sometimes he overdoes it because these deities are very mean, apparently. And he and he floods, <laughs> and he's and he sometimes either floods or, or or brings drought based on how much you worship him. Uh, and uh, and he's known to be mischievous. And on the bottom left, you have the god of the moon. His name is Sin. And the reason he has a crystal ball is because he can foretell the future. And hopefully, I can, hopefully, I can keep looking for this piece because I really do want to uh, recreate these these deities in a way that perhaps you can battle them. You know, as gods, you battle each god to to get to paradise. That was one of my ideas for a game. Uh, however, if I if I don't find the file, I may have to just <laughs> recreate them all over again. Uh, and if you go to the next slide, please, John. Uh, moving on to uh, moving from ancient art to actual commissions, I decided to delve into uh, modern modern day. Um, architecture, well, traditional architecture, which is like, which is, I call it modern day, because it is different from the ancient art that I'm familiar with. So I decided to go into traditional architecture. One of the first things I've done is I did a commission for the um, the, uh, the National Day Celebration of Bahrain, which took place in Washington, D.C., in the National Portrait Gallery. And I was commissioned to create a 3D printed uh, fort which is an actual fort in the city of, uh, of Rafah in Bahrain. And it's a Portuguese style fort, which was the seat of power for a number of years. And uh, these were given out as giveaways to the guests at the, at the National Day uh, celebration. And after that, if you go to the next slide, please, John, what I decided to do is I decided to, uh, to recreate um, in, in a very strange way, I decided to recreate traditional architecture in, um, in, in, in this in tilt brush. And this is, this is an immersive piece that is, is meant to feel uncomfortable. And the reason why it's meant to feel uncomfortable is because um, this depicts the traditional homes of an island in Bahrain called Al Muharraq. And the thing you have to know about Al Muharraq is it had, it used to have a social, it's not just these beautiful traditional homes, it used to have a very strong social fabric. And with the, the, the modern day progress and businesses and coming into the island, uh, a lot of these houses were destroyed. And with these houses being destroyed, so did that strong social fabric. Of, of people coming together and, and going in and out of each other's houses and, and, and having a strong uh, bond with each other. So I decided to create this, and, and I know it's, the name is very unoriginal, it's called Glitch, uh, but there was a, 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 a glitch in this social fabric. And, um, and, and not only that, but the, the, these homes were also created for the environment that they were in. They were cool. In the, in the summer and they were warm in the winter. They were created with the material found on the island and they also had natural cooling systems. Um, but unfortunately, there's very little of these homes left, which is, which is why it, it is uh, the way that it is. Um, I, after, after doing this, I, I decided to create uh, immersive pieces uh, for the 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 uh, Bahrain Embassy in Washington D.C., so to to educate people on the traditional architecture that um, that that we are we're hoping to preserve on on the island, and if you go to the next slide, please, John. Um, this was part of a wonderful wonderful collaboration that I have done with uh, with a chef, a local chef. Her name is Hessa. Uh, her, her her Instagram account is curiously hungry. She's a wonderful person, and she's and she, her, just like just like me, she really loves different cultures all around the world. So what we did is we decided to create an immersive 
uh, virtual reality art and food collaboration. And we just we uh, called it Journey Through the Silk Road. And uh, there was a video that accompanied this slide, but it, unfortunately the video didn't work, so I'd have to describe it to you. Hessa focused, uh, Chef Hessa focused on the journey of the dumpling through the countries of China, Uzbekistan, Syria, Turkey, and Italy. And I focused on the different art styles and the, and the, and the arches of these different countries. And at the, at the end of the event, we had several people um, that, several guests wear a headset and sign their name in tilt brush. And, and this, this piece was the result of all these different names. And, and what I did was I then wrote uh, thank you in the different languages of these countries on the Silk Road. And if you go to the next slide, please, John. And of course, it's not all serious. You have to have fun with it as well. <laughs> you have to have fun with what you do as well. So what I did was I took part in virtual reality Inktober and uh, for the past couple of years. And these are just some examples of the things that I've done um, uh, with in, in, uh, during the virtual reality Inktober. I, I drew one VR artwork every day for the entire month of October. And uh, and some some of them were a little bit more detailed than others, but I just had fun with it. It was it's and I highly recommend anybody who's doing anything creative to do to to challenge yourself and do something for for 30 days, whatever it is that you're doing, either if, if you're drawing or painting or coding or or any of that stuff. It's it's it actually really really gets you um, it, uh, perfects your skills and and. Um, and uh, it, and you produce really good content that you can that you can use later on for other projects. And uh, if you go to the next slide, please, John. Uh, during during the lockdown, I mean, this is the, it's sticking out like a sore thumb. It really really did affect my my work and my um, and, and a couple of events and solo shows that got cancelled. So what I did was um, I decided to stream uh, some live virtual reality. Uh, painting and I focused on really positive themes and themes that relate to all of us uh, which is the uh, connection of human beings and nature so what I did here was I, I decided to on, on the on the top left corner you see the cherry blossoms a reminder that cherry cherry blossoms bloom one week in the year and this is a reminder that life is fleeting it's beautiful but it's also fleeting and that we should enjoy it and in the middle, you have a seed that is that is germinating. And this, I, I believe that this describes us when we go through changes. The seed has to completely break itself for it to grow. And I feel some of, some of us have gone through something like that in our lives. On the top right, we have a lotus bed uh, filled with lotus flowers. And what this this was really fun because I decided to tell Twitch chat to tell me what their favorite colors were so that I can create lotus flowers um, on their favorite colors. And on the bottom right and bottom left are actually from the same piece. And this is this is a tree that has all four seasons. And this is something I tell I tell to I tell my friends a lot that you are a tree. You go through changes just as a tree does and you let go of things that don't serve you just as a tree does during the fall and you need to rest and 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 um, and regain your energy so that you can bloom in the springtime. And uh, on, in the middle, on the bottom is a, I, I wanted to immerse myself in a place that I liked. So I really like Japanese gardens. And so I drew a Japanese garden with some koi fish and played a lot of wonderful Japanese music <laughs> and accompanied that. And if you go to the next slide, uh, slide please, John. Over here, uh, this was also drawn uh, live on Twitch. On the right-hand side, I decided to recreate uh, the bedroom. That uh, it's a painting of uh, of Van Gogh, and it's his bedroom in Aachen. And it is a um, it's a very it's a very famous painting that has three versions of it. So I, I recreated the third version of that painting, and you can walk around and and uh, and, and look at look at the furniture that is that was in his room at that time. 
uh, I will put that on Google Poly. Uh, some people recently asked me to put that on Google Poly so that they can walk around in it on, with, with their headset. So I will, I will do that if you all are interested. And on the left-hand side, is uh, I, I also I did this on Twitch as well, and I asked everybody on Twitch chat if they were comfortable giving out their names or nicknames, and I wrote them in Arabic calligraphy into the stars. And this is the first version of this piece. It's actually it actually has 25 plus names, and it's an entire universe. And the finished piece, uh, the viewer can actually lie down and and view all of the names like a gigantic. Um, solar system and what this is is basically a reminder it's a it's a quote that i read by bill nye the science guy that everybody is essentially made of stardust therefore we are biologic technically biologically connected to each other and that is what i wanted to, to represent and everybody on twitch chat actually got a little um a little uh photograph of their name just just sending it and and, and doing doing it what doing with it what they wanted uh, and if you go to the next slide, please, John. Okay, so this is a um, this is a recreation of the very first tilt brush piece I created, the, the the soul travel piece, and I called this soul travel corridor. And what this is is a mixture of the soul travel piece with uh, another piece that I've done called the infinite. So and you, it's the same. It's the same idea. You start out with a rigid, um, measured world, the world that our mortal minds can uh, can can understand and can measure. And as you walk through the corridor, everything starts to dissipate, and you start to enter a world that I wanted to represent as the infinite. Um, in uh, I, I added some uh, Islamic. Uh, philosophy into this in that uh, you have the uh, Islamic ge geometric shapes and they're in black and white. This is our world. It, it is what it is and it is black and white. And then you have this uh, this beautiful infinite, which is what we think is the infinite wisdom of, of God um, and, and, the, and the universe also being infinite. And also, and I, in the very middle of the piece is actually a natural occurring pattern. It is not a pattern that we have created. It is the natural orbit of the planet Venus around uh, the sun. It, it creates this beautiful um, a star of Venus, this beautiful star pattern. And I thought that was very important to put because it's a natural uh, geometric pattern that I found really, really interesting. Um, and it's, it is also, and it is also infinite, that orbit of, of Venus as well. And I, what, what I also uh, wanted to tell the viewer is that it was, this is also heavily inspired by uh, an uh, Islamic philosopher called Ibn Sina. Uh, in the West, they know him as Avicina, which I don't know why there was a name change. It's not that difficult to say Ibn Sina. And his philosophy is called the floating man, that if you strip away everything, um, if you strip away everything as you walk down this corridor, you are left with just your conscience. And that is the philosophy of the floating man. And I, and I wanted to incorporate, to incorporate that as well in this piece. And uh, John, if you go to the next slide, please. What I did was I took that symbol of the, the star of Venus um, and I, I decided that I was going to uh, create my own in, uh, immersive or, uh, immersive art organization, and I called it Aether Labs. And uh, the reason why I called it Aether Labs was because Aether was um, some was a is a substance that ancient scientists thought is it was um, sorry. It's a substance that ancient scientists thought was what the universe was made up of, of aether. And even though that's not necessarily true or 100% accurate, I really loved that attempt to understand our universe. And that is that is the main inspiration for the name Aether Labs. And of course, this is just, it's just the beginning and I'm still in doing my studies, but I'm hoping that I can incorporate um, art and tech and games into my lab and experimenting with art tech and games as as well as 
uh, creating a, uh, psycho a, a psychological relationship to ancient art and ancient cultures and ancient civilizations through art, tech, and games. Uh, and that's, I feel like that's one of the, one of the main things that made games such as Assassin's Creed so popular is because we had a connection to Florence or we had a connection to uh, uh, Paris, um, um, just, just as, a, as an example. And uh, if you go to the next slide, please, John. And I wanted to thank you all so much for coming. And these are these are my socials, just in case. But my my website is still very new. Uh, however, um, uh, please uh, do do contact me uh, on on any of my socials if you want to see more of my work. And thank you so much for coming. Awesome. Thank you, Nayla. And thanks everybody for um, attending. So we're gonna open this up for questions. So you have a raise hand on the right side of your screen. If you raise your hand, we'll give you the megaphone so you can ask a question. And then once we get through these, we will uh, open it up and we can all kind of mingle and stuff. Let's so see. Uh, if nobody has a question right now, um, I have a question if Nayla, maybe if you could talk a little bit more about some of your interest in gaming and stuff um, and taking some of these objects into um, and creating um, some games with them. Oh yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the one of the main things I, 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 I mentioned this very briefly, but I, I did um, when I when I created the deities, which the um, the four deities, um, and, and the reason I was so sad that that, that that was lost because that was one of the things that I wanted to create. I wanted to recreate, um, uh, and I was I was very I was heavily inspired by um, this this uh, this interest in Norse mythology and battling the Norse gods. And, and, and I, I see this this uh, reoccurring theme in gaming a lot of of the of um, either battling the Norse. Uh, mythological deities or the Greek mythological deities, and what I wanted to do is I wanted to create that experience, but with the Mesopotamian gods and their own powers and their own way. And I wanted to incorporate instead of incorporating uh, Norse um, Nordic runes, I wanted uh, I wanted to recreate a way for people to be familiar with cuneiform, the ancient uh, texts in used in ancient Mesopotamia. So that was my main inspiration to get into um, merging uh, the, the ancient cultures with, with gaming, but, uh, but it, it, could, it could be even, even bigger than that. I, I wanted to also um, try to recreate the Epic of Gilgamesh in, uh, within immersive art as well, but, uh, but that's, that's something for the future, hopefully. Awesome. So I can't believe this. Oh, we do have a question. I was just about to say, I can't believe we don't have a question. I think everybody <laughs> just wants to come talk to you. I think that's basically what this was going to do. Khan, you have the um, microphone. Go ahead and accept it. Hi, thank you so much for your presentation. Your work is, is amazing. I'm wondering, uh, is all the work that we saw, uh, was all of it made using Tilt Brush? And also, I'm curious, um, what was it like for you to use, start using Tilt Brush for the first time? Was it hard to get used to? And, and how do you feel about it now? Okay, thank you for your question. The first, yes, the first question, um, I mean, your first, the first answer, yes, everything was made using Tilt Brush, even though I have dabbled in, in uh, other, other apps, but I feel, I feel really comfortable using Tilt Brush. And um, in the beginning, it is, it is a little difficult because I felt like um, I felt like you you have to have an understanding of sculpture to use tilt brush efficiently, but but it is also there are a lot of um, ways you can also use it in a two D in a two D way, but uh, but but as you as you practice um, every day, it gets much easier and you get a, you get you get a hang of. Um, of the application when it first started out in in 2017 there were there were several things that they, they haven't updated it's much better now
Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on the next, next person up is Eric. Eric, are you there? Yeah, let's see. Is it on? Yeah. Uh, hey, yeah, I can yeah, hear you. Yeah, okay. You're, you're a little you're soft. Slow, but I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was very cool to see uh, all this art, like uh, making uh, old symbols into some kind of form that people can experience and walk around and kind of get a scope of what uh, it means to other people. Uh, I was very interested in uh, ancient cultures like Sumeria and, uh, like, of course, all the pyramids and stuff. And I was wondering if uh, you've used VR in any way to let people uh, maybe play with some artifacts that people have found in uh, in the ancient sites and maybe try to figure out like the, you can actually be, yeah, touch them and like uh, try to handle them and figure out if uh, any of them uh, could have uh, any interesting uses that is not apparent when you just see a picture. Yeah, there, there's there um there are I believe that there are a couple of um of existing apps that do that that they try to recreate the, the realistic environment, which is really interesting, and it's it's uh it's something that I feel is is essential because you you would experience the the the, um, the realistic world in 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 virtual reality or or even on your desktop computer, and then travel to the place to actually experience it. Um, but I, I still haven't dabbled in doing something a little bit more realistic and a little bit more um, interactive. However, that is that is something I took into consideration. Like I, I had I had an idea of picking up a piece and then having having a flashback of whoever owned that piece, uh, that artifact last, for example. But but but, but that is that is something for for the future, hopefully. <laughs> Okay, next up is uh, Vin. Hi, Layla. Can you hear me? Hi. Yep. Yes, Hi. I can hear you. Good. Hello. Um, brilliant, brilliant presentation. Excellent. Lovely. Um, Thank you. The, the one that got to me was that soul travel one with Venus. Um, uh huh. Do you know the one you did with the, is it Soul Travel? Um, the one with, you've got a bit with Venus in it as well? Um, yes, yes, Soul Travel yeah, Corridor. Yeah, that one. Oh, okay, that's the one. So is there an image that you have taken that from, or was that from your mind? Um, um, and can you put that in a video game? Can you actually incorporate that into your next video game or the video game that you are going to do? Because for that me, is, that was my favorite. Yeah. That was my oh, favorite. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, you can. You can actually incorporate it in, in into a video game that is possible. Uh, you can uh, you do that through Unity. And um, that was that is actually an image that I did picture in my mind. Like I, I did think about this transition of the soul into the, the next life. And it is it, to me, it is this dissipating, you know, our it is the understand our understanding right now dissipating and us uh, our minds exiting this mortal body and going into this deeper understanding of what this world and this universe really is it's it's this is all from <laughs> from from um, thinking too much probably <laughs> Awesome. I don't see any other questions. Thanks a ton, Nila. So since we still have some time, well, I'm going to open up the stage. If everybody, or if you want to, run up on the stage and we'll get a quick group photo. We can throw some emojis up and all that fun stuff. And then um, you can talk to Nayla or whatever you'd like. We really appreciate everyone coming by today, though. Thank you Thanks. so much, everyone, for coming by. So oh, the, saw one more <laughs> our, cameras, our cameras up in the sky there. So if everybody, whoever wants to turn up on the stage and then just start throwing up a bunch of emojis, we'll grab a we'll grab a photo um, later from the live stream. And thank you, thanks, Nayla. That was a great presentation.
Thank you so much, John. This is really fun. And thank you all for coming. <laughs> All right, I'm unmuting everyone so we can mix and mingle, try to be respectful of one another. I don't think we're gonna have a problem with this crowd or not. And thank you. Everybody I could. Okay. <laughs> thank awesome, thank you everybody. Thank you so much everyone. <laughs>